Too short. I hope you enjoy it. Or the CMCO did not allow you to go out or to go to anywhere. Yeah. I think you are relaxed over the period. So let's work. So as I posted earlier in the WhatsApp, today is going to be more interactive. The short period we have. Uh, we have done a lot in statistics and our test is this week or next week? When? This week? Yes, this week. OK, that will be on Thursday. Let's interact today and look at gray areas you might have. Uh, and also. My expectations. Both in the test. And in the exams after next week, we are likely to be meeting on the exam day. OK. So uh, let me start by recounting what we have done. We have done our both descriptive and inflation statistics. We have tried to use both Excel in some little, little statistical calculations or analysis. We have been able to demonstrate the SPSS for those who have SPSS package to demonstrate how SPSS can do analysis of survey questionnaires or other type of data that could be fed in, especially how to capture data in SPSS and to do some analysis. We have done the importance of correlation and importance of beta coefficients in the regression analysis. So uh, basically our example has been with applying, trying to draw statistics into real estate sector by looking at the renter and the characteristics of renter. How does this characteristics affect renter or capital value of our properties or whatever we are going to look for? So I believe with that we have covered the slabs for this section of the course. And I expect that anybody can do mean medium mode. This is just a refreshment of what has been taught in the secondary school about statistics. But here, how do we apply it into our into various profession? Is what we are trying to uh, try uh, regression is talking about activities on real estate where we belong to. So at least generally we can do find this. The variances and we can find the deviation. The standard deviation is important to us because when we go, if you recall your investment, real estate investment analysis, you, you agree with me that we did some standard deviation calculations which stand in for risk in investments world. So the importance of finding standard deviation in a distribution of a data set is important to let you know that if you are talking about investment, you are talking about risk when we talk about standard deviation. That's as much how much important standard deviation calculation is. So it's, it's, it dictates to us the element of risk in our in our investment as well as telling us uh, the variances how this pass of we, our data could be from the central tendency so we need to know mean medium mode especially mean and standard deviation these are more critical than median or mode then we look at uh, how do we apply standard deviation to determine the spread of data, whether it is normal or not non-normal. So when the data is spread evenly around the mean, we believe it is normally distributed. So, and the way we used to, we use standard deviation to determine normality most of the time 
is by using the circle, or you can put, draw a line, find the center as the mean, and now put the figure of the mean at the center, then you will begin to look at plus or minus standard deviation from the mean. When you plus, when you minus, where would the two points lie? Plus or minus two standard deviation, plus or minus three standard deviation. So you can use that point to draw your curve to know whether it is normally distributed or non normally distributed. Then in the world of correlation, interpretation of the coefficient is important. You must know whether it is negative, whether it is strong or weak, whether it's significant. These are three important things to find in correlation studies. Is this significant? Is there a significant relationship between two variables? Also, we need to know whether the correlation is weak, moderate or strong, and we need to know whether it is negative or positive. If it is negative, for example, again in investment analysis, correlate, negative correlation forms a portfolio. So when their investments are negatively correlated, then they can be combined in a portfolio. That's when we are doing investment diversification or when you are creating a portfolio to make sure you spread your risk. You will not put two investments who are having high risk at the same time in a portfolio. You will better choose one that the risk is high and another one that the risk is low so that they move in opposite direction, negatively correlated or inversely correlated. So such the essence of correlation for us is to know when we are doing our analysis in some other areas like investment analysis where we can deploy correlation in order to know which assets can be combined which assets cannot be combined in an investment portfolio again we need to know whether it is strong whether it is weak if it is weak it might be negligible you can overlook it that means the impact is not serious but if it's a strong one then you know that two variables that have a strong relationship are to be looked into. Then we want to know whether it's significant or not. Eventually, at the end of the day, we'll be able to determine what is strong with our investment in real estate. It is not only combining to using correlation to study two investment options, it could be to study the characteristics of our investments and how one affects the other. For example, when we talk about location and accessibility, if location is far away, but if there is a good and very easy access, it will not have a damaging effect on the value of the property because the property could be easily accessible. But we have properties that are near to the center, but navigating to get to the property is a problem. So you won't say because it is close, because the location is closer to the center, it will have it all good. So accessibility complements the impact of location. A property that is located far away, without, with good easy access, commuting access, could be better than a property that is located near, but have awkward access. So there should be a strong relationship between correlation between location and accessibility and a value. Because we believe that location determines value. Accessibility also determines value. So if you know correlation studies, you will be know what are the characteristics that can affect each other and how do they go how do they affect each other so that it can help us in our analysis of value as well as in advising our clients so also regression which we have talked about lately is about prediction you know we are value estimators we do valuations and valuation is not reality it's not estimates the reality becomes the price of the assets when you say a property is likely to go for 1.5 million, how are you sure? 
you have only used the market data to do the estimation or to estimate what is the probable price. So it is when that asset is sold and you know actually how much you realize that you know the price. And that is why the price is different from value. Value is an estimate. The price is a But the estimate can lead to the price. And if we know what are the characteristics and how these characteristics are affecting our variable of interest, which is value, we will be able to predict what the value will be, knowing all parameters from past evidences. And as much as we have done what we need to do, we will be able to, once we have done the regression, we know the regression line, we will be able to input data. And when we have one in factor changes, we will be able to predict what will be, be happen to the, the variable of interest, which is our value. Or it can be return. You might be looking at what are the factors that affect return. When you can put them in a regression equation, it's possible you will be able to predict what return the property will give you in the next one, two, three, four, five years. All other things being equal. And if you have to change one or two parameters, you can put the parameters into it and be able to forecast or predict what future values will be. So, and this is this helps us really in status in, in our real estate business. Apart from that, we do real estate research. And when we get data, it may not be economic data all the time. It could be run. We, are, we wish you now know that we can use statistic tools, statistical tools to analyze and get a decision or may or take a decision about the information we have collected from the markets. Another area where I think we know you will need is even in your in next semester when you begin to do academic project writing. You may need to collect data. As for during this MCEO, you get your data online. You can put on your questionnaire online and download the responses. It is not only descriptive you can use to analyze data. All this information can be even be put into other softwares for further analysis. So this is the essence of doing having statistics as a subject in our course. So this is an overview of what we have done. So I will I will give it to you now to ask questions, uh, your contributions to what you have done in the past five weeks, so that we package ourselves, we get prepared for our test on Thursday, and hopefully next week, if there's any backlash from our test or any further, we'll be able to. Look at it next week before I end my class with you. So I begin to welcome contributions from the class. So let's interact. Okay. Uh, who goes first? Any question? Any contribution? Any comment? So today is for interaction. If there anything is not clear to us, we will still further explain. So, yeah, we'll go first. I'll be calling you by your name. Floor is open. Just let us have your comments, your questions. So far, where you're having problems, if everything is okay, if there's any addition, any suggestion, Let's have it now. Is there no question from anyone or no suggestion, no contribution, no comments? Everything is OK.
Uh, doctor, yeah. Um, sorry. I think it's because mainly everything has been thought pretty clearly and pretty well. So it's just about practicing first, you know, yeah. doing it again, repetition. So I think that's why most of us don't really have any questions because we're pretty clear. It's just about practicing and doing it again. Okay. Yeah. That, that's good. If everybody agree that, that you agree that with that your position, I think that is fantastic. So we just want to, I just want to make sure that we don't assume it's okay. We should be sure it's okay. So the syllabus is not too much, but at least, you know, when you are doing online things, I cannot see you physically to know how much you comprehend. So this is why this interaction comes in. If it has been in class, you know, classwork, I can go around and see what each one is doing. And I will know the level of uh, assimilation. But if I go by your position for the class as a representative of the class, I think that is fantastic. So is that the opinion of the class? Everything is clear for now. Yes, just some practical. If go practical, it will be better. Lah. But then because we are not in the class, so we can have uh, good interaction. Maybe okay. so this is the main problem. Like what Sen say just now. Okay. Um, doctor, I'd like to ask how how will the uh, test be carried out? Is it um like you know how many questions or how long is it? Mm, six. Uh, the the test is going to be about thirty marks. So it has to be justified. We will we will use the old time for I think one and a half hours test period. You know we are doing it online to give you room to package it and send and submit so that nobody will be cut off on whether I cannot submit or I didn't submit everything. So. I think the test itself could be one hour, full one hour writing. Another 30 minutes for to allow for other time structure so that you can submit. Everybody will be able to submit within the time allotted. Uh, just like the exam last semester, which was online. So that is the format. I will release the. I, I hope everybody can assess Spectrum. So release the question through Spectrum because it must be recorded and evidence of you having the test must be on the Spectrum. You know, Spectrum is our LMS. So everybody, anybody can access it and see the proof that you actually did the test. So it will be released through the Spectrum. And now I will, I will set it up in a way that you submit through Spectrum. So I will only download when, when I'm getting it, I'm set to mark. A mark. But after the test, immediately after the test, maybe next week, we can have an experience of it and see where we need to ask more questions, maybe. But that is the format. Online, within the two hours period that you normally have our tutorial, and through Spectrum. So I will send it through Spectrum. Is that okay? Okay, so it's all handwritten, right? And then we scan and submit? Yes. Okay. Uh, you scan and submit, yes. So any other question? We still have okay. one. Now. So, yeah. In case I missed it, I'm uh, just wondering what would be the mix between the theory and the calculations in the next steps? The theory and the calculations. Is it more theory? I'm assuming it's more calculation based, but would that be more? I, I, yes, at the, the, this stage, we, I will not say theory, but I will say application. Because uh, you are to, maybe depending on the, how the, exam, the test coming, as I'm talking to you, your test is test, the test questions are not ready. So, but it record across your ability to interpret what statistics means. 
For instance, I talk about standard deviation and distribution across mean. So you can produce a chart. When you have gotten your mean, you got your standard deviation. Just as I said, play, you draw the mean in the middle of the line and you look at mean plus or minus one standard deviation, mean plus or minus two standard deviation, mean plus or minus three standard deviation. If that the max, all the data points must be within mean plus or minus three SD, which means three times SD to the left of the mean, three times SD to the right of the mean. All the data points must be within that range. So that means it's, a norm, it's normally distributed. So you can be able to produce the chart, just as I, some representations I did in early statistics when we are talking about standard deviation. Then uh, at some time, you will maybe thrown to see how much you understand correlation results. You know, I told you now that we want to know this, the effect, negative or positive, the size of the effect, weak, moderate or strong, and we want to know whether it's significant. So this, if, especially in correlation, you should understand what is the size effect of correlation coefficient, as all well as telling us about the significance, like what does it mean when they say it's significant? So when we just, uh, uh, English meaning of significance is something that you cannot do away with, something that is important, resolving all a, a clear evidence. So such things like that, uh, this is not about you knowing how to calculate, it's about you knowing the meaning of the result of your calculation. So most of the time, not all of the time, you will be you have to do a kind of theory that you need to memorize or you don't just uh, ask question of what is being or what is this. But we can only give you a situation or a scenario and tell you to interpret. That shows you know what more about it. That does not mean you cannot calculate your own to get maybe you find the mean, find the CDSD, find the variance. Those such questions can come in. But more important is that even after you have done the calculation, what is the meaning? You know, in the present world, there are a lot of software that can use you, you can use to calculate. So it is not more about whether you know how to calculate often, since you have applications that can do that for you. But the most important now is what is the meaning of the result you are getting after calculation? How can you interpret it so that your client who doesn't know about correlation will know that when you say correlation, you are saying one variable and the other, they are mo their movement, relationship exists between them, and one can affect the other in one way or the other, on another way. So it is, I think it will be more applied. I will expect more application, more meaning, interpretation of what your results are. Is that okay? Um, doctor, I yes. would like to ask, is uh, if there's question about calculation, do we need to show step by step or we can use Excel to produce the answer? It will be better you do step by step. Handwritten step by step, including yes. all the formulas. Yes. All right, thank you, doctor. Yeah. Any other question? So, um, we all understood the descriptive statistics very well. Okay, for another thing, for instance, if you are to represent your data in a in pictorial form or in a graph or in a chart of your choice, you know, such question tells you that we have different charts like bar charts, like histogram, like pie charts, like line diagram that you can use to represent statistical data. So if I say a graph of your choice or a chart of your choice, it is what you know you will do. If I say use pie chart, not everybody can construct a pie chart on the exam because you may not be prepared to have a compass and all those things. But 
schematic representation is what we are talking about. Anyone you feel like comfortable using, you can produce it. That shows that this is what you know. But if I decide to say one, what if you are not comfortable with that one? So I would prefer you choose the kind of chart you want to use to represent my figures, uh, my data. And I now know which one is common. Even I would be able to determine which one is common among you, among students, which one coming. After all, you are different, you are in different locations. So it's, it's not easy for somebody to say because Mr. A is using pie chart. I want to use pie charts too. Everybody will have chosen what they know. This is kind of application I other thinking we are think I am looking at. So things can come out in various ways, but I think it's more of application now. Is that okay? Doctor, I have another question. Yes. Uh, since you mentioned that we should include all the steps, I'm wondering if there's a range of acceptable answers because maybe some of us might uh, have our own formulas, for instance, for standard deviation that we're comfortable with. So would that be acceptable if the final answer is still within a range or something? The, the, why, that's why we call it applied now. I, I'm not expecting a sharp one single answer from everybody. You know, statistically, there is even the chance uh, of differences when you begin to make approximations. Definitely, that will change the final answer of everybody. Some we use for decimal point until the last answer. Some we begin to round off from beginning to two decimal point. And that will make the final answers of the two people differ. And again, various methodology that you are comfortable with goes with any uh, any calculations, not only on statistics, any mathematics, any calculation. If there are alternative routes, you can go with it. Today, when I was taking the investment analysis, uh, you know, covariance is equal to correlation multiplied by standard deviation. I don't know if you know. So I, I, I let them know correlation multiplied by standard deviation of the relevant variables is the same thing as the covariance of the variables. So and we, work, we try to adopt it in when we are doing our portfolio risk analysis this morning. So it is not a straightforward, it's one, one method affair, various methodologies you know, you can deploy it. If I want to confirm, I will just put it, your formula on, on Google. You know I have all the time when I want to mark. And I check whether the formula is correct or not, simple. Once the formula or whatever method you use is acceptable in the world, in the academic and professional world, it goes on. So it's not a strict final answer marking. It is a step by step to know that you really know what to do. Does that answer you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, doctor, I have one question here. Yeah. Um, the test will be focused on what you, what doctor teach before, right? Something like uh, the Z test, D test, that one we, we haven't tried any example. So will, will it be tested in the test? Which one? The D test, the T test, Z test. All, to, all those ones, fine, they will not come in exam, but with the slide you have, you can look at it and practice for those who have the data, our SPSS exercise data, you can practice not just an analysis, you can practice them. Because in the world, when you do some analysis, all those tests, once you pick them, will come out. And once you know what the test is mean, significance, you know, still some tests are thinking of comparing means, whether it's a difference between one mean or the other. 
And one mean or the other can be two groups. You want to know whether there's difference between the means of two groups. That's where we have paired test, paired t test, where you look at maybe you divide your data into two groups by sex, female, male. And when you want to know whether there's a significant difference between their means, when you run t test, peer, compare means, t test, when you do it, the table will give you whether there's a significant thing. All you want to know is that, oh, the average response of male is either different or not different from that of the other group. If you are not pair, if it is just compare means, you may have a mean you have already. You can just put it in the value and say compare means and choose your variable. The system will give you the figure whether it's significantly different or not. That's just uh, what tests are doing to know the civilian level depending on the hypothesis you have set. So, doctor, so I can I can conclude that we just learned the theory part for the t-test, z-test. So no, we don't need to, to focus on the formula how to calculate. No. Because I, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, doctor. And we can demonstrate with SPSS as well, how SPSS does it and what you look for. We can equally demonstrate. Yeah. So any other question or any other contribution? Who else is contributing? I want to hear your voice. Any other one contributing? OK, if I may ask, uh, I think I want us to look at the. Our, I will share the, my slides for this correlation studies and uh, regression so that if we look at if we get a result of correlation, we know where to concentrate in in. And what are the expected? What are the meanings of the results? We have. I mentioned this briefly last class, last last class we had, that we are looking what we are looking for when you have the result, even when you have the result of your regression. What are the critical things we want you to report on? So I I will share my slide now, so that we look at the a typical regression, and I will say it again because these are part of applications. I may not ask you to find the slope or intercept. I gave you the method how to do it, but I may not ask you. I can give you a regression output and tell you to explain what the result is saying. So this is a, an application. So that when you find yourself outside and you run a regression, so you will be able to tell either your boss or your client what is the meaning of the regression. So also when we do correction studies, I plan to bring in the results in our slide and let's pick it one by one and address it. Would that be okay by you? Is that okay? So that we look at this point. Yes, doctor. Okay, so let me share the my screen again and let's look at the slide. Where is where is it? PowerPoint. Do I have PowerPoint here? Okay, I'm coming. Okay. This one, which one? Mm. OK. 
Okay. I want to share a PowerPoint. Where's my PowerPoint? Okay, maybe Windows. Okay, can you see my screen? I'm not sure you, are, you can see this slide. No, no, we can see the slide. Okay. Let's, let's get back. Sure. Yes. Let's go. Doctor, do we need a graph paper? No, just plain paper to draw. It's just a schematic. All you need is just to be able to show what you, you're doing. It's not really a draw to scale thing. Okay. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Yeah. So I'm trying to in general. Mm -hmm. This is meeting in general, yes. Share window. So can I go to this one? Just let me know if you can get my screen. Like, I don't know what is happening. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. Yes, I have a PowerPoint I'm trying to share. And uh, no files available. Why? Sharing is paused until you return to the shared. Okay. Which one is shared now? My, my slide refused to share. I don't know what is. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, cancel shared now. So, yeah. you know what happened? You show me my PowerPoint, there's no. Okay, let me try share it through the window. So. Where is a shared window? Okay. I don't. I don't know where is my shared window. Desktop. I tried to share desktop. I don't know whether it's sharing. Uh, doctor, just before this, we saw the slide. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, here is a typical regression, a linear regression analysis. I'm not sure, okay. Still okay like this. Now, when you make a regression and after selecting all this, these four tables will be the output of your 
analysis. So this first table here that is talking about variables entered is telling us about what are the variables that has been entered. For example, we have gender, we have male, we have female. No variable has been removed. So out of the variables that were entered, because we have we have exam score with being a dependent variable, we want to know whether the whether the gender affect the exam score. So here, other variables are hours of studies. That is how the number of hours studied by male, the number of hours studied by female. No variable has been removed. That means the variable that has been highlighted are entered. So you can see all requested variables entered. This is just for you to know that all your variables have been used for the analysis. So no, no, no other thing from this table. So then the analysis of variance, which is ANOVA, you can see from male, female, the variable has tried to analyze whether there's a significant difference between the exam score of male or female. So if male and female have exam scores, what is the mean? Is there any significant difference between the mean from the two? So this is what this table is talking about. And it's talking about whether it's significant or not. And we can see that there's a significant here. Now, the, more, the most important table in regression are the model summary. This is how much contribution this particular variable is having on our model. For example, we use normally use R square. R square for the male here is about 69.2%, showing that 69.2% contribution of our studies does the is what the female has. And let me say this again. Female R square is 69.2%. And predictor, exam score is our dependent variable. Independent variable is part of our story. The number contribute 69.2 percent to their exam score. However, on the female side, the number of hours of study contributes 24.9 percent to their exam score. You can see there is a difference between what hour of studies contribute to the score of male and the score of female. So it's saying for every for a male, a male reading hours contribute 69.2 percent, almost 70 percent of their scores is determined by the number of hours they are put into perhaps maybe private study after class. So that means the male need to read more so that they can pass more. The remaining 30% or 20 or 31.8% can be due to other activities. Maybe groups, uh, maybe some interaction, practical exposure, the industry experience, or maybe the funding hitting well so that you are not hungry when you want to write an exam. If you are hungry when you want to write an exam, you may be seeing double and you may not perform well. So let's assume feeding well, feeding system, comfort in the living style contributes the remaining 31 point something percent. But for male, 69 percent of their score can be ascribed to the number of hours of study. 
On the other hand, the female is having 25% contribution. That means the number of hours studied by female contributes only 25%. So why, what gives them the other 75% of the score? Their own comfort level may determine more of their score than the number of hours of study. Again, for male, comfort contributes 30%. Reading hours contribute 70%. For female, reading hours contribute less. Why maybe the comfort, the stress-free environment, they are not thinking about anything, they are okay, they are good. Enthusiasm contributes other 75%. You can see based on gender, different thing contributes to their exam scores. So these are the kind of explanations we want from the R square, from the table of the model summary. In some cases, if there's no differentiating factor like male or female, if it's just a straight regression, either you are male or female or whatever, straight regression, nobody is trying to look at what happens if they are for the female of, of male. The model summary will just be a just two column line draw something, and we give you R square again. And the R square is going to tell you what the factors you are considering as predictors are contributing to the dependent variable. Then we look at the coefficient table. In the coefficient table, the coefficient table will tell you what is the contribution of each predictor. So only we, here we have only one predictor, which is hours study, that is hours of study, the number of hours you put in study, how is it affecting your exam score? For male, the contribution is 83.2 by beta, standardized coefficient, standardized beta. So, but for female, it is about 50%. So contribution, both are significant. Because 80, 83 point something percent contribution is not a small contribution, and 50 percent contribution too is not small. So if we want to know the beta, the beta is now the coefficient. So which says these hours of studies contribute 83.2 percent to exam score of male, and contributes about 50 percent to exam score of female. So this is what explanation we are looking at. And again, we look at the fact that there are significant contributions. The weight, the contribution is positive because you can see it's not minus point, it's just 0.832. So it's positive, strong for the male, moderate for the female, and they are significant. So if they are not significant, we can neglect such a variable, but the, the contribution is significant, inevitable. So this is kind of explanation we are expecting when you see a model summary. Then you can write, you can now write out the equation line. For example, for male, we have our exam score equal to 83.2 times of hours of reading. That's the equation, the model. And when you write that out, then you will be able to predict. So what does that mean? If the number of hours increase by two, that means the chances of having a exam score will increase by 0.82 of that two effects. And for the female, you can also predict what number of hours will contribute to their score, 
If you increase the hours of reading by one, you are increasing the score by half, 50% of. So the scores mark will increase by 50% of. So that is what the interpretation means. And that is how you can explain whether they are significant or not significant, positive or negative, strong or weak or moderate. Is this explanation about uh, interpreting a regression equation output clear? Is it clear? Clear. Yeah. Good. Yeah, let me quickly show another one. Which has to, I think the one we did in class. Can I, do I have the results? Okay. Here I have the results of this one. I don't know how clear it is to you. I, I just want to point out two informations. You know, I told you if there's no difference in the uh, factor, the model summary will just be a straight line. As we have it here, model summary, you can see it's just one line. And our R square is contributing almost 80%. What it means is that all the factors that were considered under this regression are contributing 80% to our dependent variable. And here, what is our dependent variable, which is monthly renter, yes, as what the, the one we did last time, monthly renter. And we now say all these four, four factors we have considered the let me count one, two, three, four. Yes, all these four factors are contributing 80% to monthly renter. Now, this because this table is not showing the different whether we are categorizing them whether male or female or whether by their races, whether they are international, whether they are local, whether they are Westerners, whether they are Africans, because we are not dif differentiating. It's just a straight summary. And so also you can see the ANOVA 2 is just a straight summary. It was not divided whether male, female or whatever. And it will show also sig significant level. Now we can now look at the coefficient here, here, the better, the standardized better is telling us what each of these predictors are contributing to the monthly renter. So we have one, two, three, four. Each one is has its own contribution. Maybe all of them has a significant contribution or by chance, one may not have significant contribution when acting alone. However, in the, when the four are acting together, their contribution is still significant. But from this coefficient, we will be able to identify which of the factors are really, really having, are influencing the significant relationship. For example, here, accessibility does not show significant, 0.74. So accessibility does not show significant, but all the other factors are showing significant. What may happen is that it's possible the accessibility is good. So is, there's no difference in level of accessibility. Perhaps accessibility all around is good, so it doesn't have any influencing factor. But all other ones are really, really affecting monthly renter. So we'll be able to explain what is the contribution by better value of each one. And if each coefficient is strong, negative, or significant, we can explain it for each one. Then after that, we can now write out our equation line, just as we have, re have written here as an equation line for the rent, this monthly renter, this is the contribution of the accessibility, 0 0.02. This is contribution of um, service. This is contribution of, 
what a repair for this for the last one service for this what is the second item let me look at it again state of repairs space oh yes this one is space in form of size so the meaning is that if any of these factors increases by one point this is what the contribution will be on the rent income and together they are all generating nine, it's a, it's almost 80 percent contribution to the rental income so i think this is equally clear any question about that Doctor, can you go back to the SPSS? Yeah, right. Um, I'm still confused about the ANOVA table. So in ANOVA table, what should we see first? What should yeah. we refer first? ANOVA table here uh, just show the significant level of all the predictors. Just as the significant level you see in the model summary. However, supposing in the regression, you know I show you two reg different regression now. Supposing in the regression you have specified that the regression should be classified into maybe gender, maybe education structure, maybe, you know we are talking about renter, and you know your education can determine your income, which determine your ability to pay for a rent. So if you have used, you have signified when you are analyzing that it should be in categories, then ANOVA is only comparing means between those categories. And let me use the first one, okay? Look at this. If you are looking at this one, look at this ANOVA. You know this one was divided into two by making sure that we want to know what is the contribution of hours of study to the exam score for male differently, for female differently. So this is where ANOVA is more, more useful to show you that the contribution by when you look at the gender is different. It's not the same. And at the same time, the difference in both, in both for male and female is significant. And when we come to the model summary, we can also see that it is significant. Because if you are contributing 69.2 to the success of male, but contributing 25% to the success of female, we can see that by the, the size of their contribution, of the contribution of our study to the, pre, to the success in the exam, between male and female is different, significantly different. That is what the ANOVA is telling us. But between male and female, it is a significant, there's a significant difference between the two. But if you have not specified whether you want it to be male, female, you just want it for all the students, then you will have a table like this, like this one here, that does not differentiate whether it's male or female, or whether it's by tribe, or whether it's by race, or whether it's by educational qualification. So since it is not divided across anything, no different defining factor, you will just analyze for everybody. And this is why you have difference in this kind of output. But the thing, both and over here, and another is, is there any significance of the contributions? So the contributions are significant jointly here. But the coefficient will tell you which of the factors doesn't have a significant contribution, even is there. Or if all of them have significant contribution one by one, one in turn of the other, the model summary will give you, especially when you are dealing with multiple independent variables where there are more predictors, more than one predictors in their equation. So it's still a linear multiple regression. Any other question? 
So, doctor, what do you mean for ANOVA? Uh, it's commonly used for, uh, like, uh, got two factors, uh, got two terms, got male and female. For, yes. for, uh, for, for, the, for the data, which is only have one, we just see got significance or not. So, ANOVA is, com ANOVA is comparing differences in means of two or more groups. Okay. Okay, so just now, Doctor, you mentioned the multiple regression. Why is that? Yes. Uh, yes, what I mean by multiple is that the dependent, the independent variables are more than one. Do we have multiple predictors? It's not only one. In the first one I show you, it is only hours of study that we are comparing to exam score. But here, we are using about four factors to determine the monthly renter. So multiple factors. That's why it's multiple regression. OK? Does that make it clear from the why so, it is multiple? So, so doctor, so uh, if refer to this slide, the ANOVA table, uh, does this Considered as a multiple regression, yeah, since there are many predictors. Yes, that's what I'm saying. This is full regression because each factor is being regressed on monthly renter. Each of the factors is regressed on multiple renter. And that is why this coefficient table tells us that each factor has different contribution. And this is why it's shown here. You know, under the accessibility, we have 0 0.27 or uh, for the space in size that is the size of the house we have 44.488 that's 48.8 percent uh the services in the house is contributing 20.8 percent why the state of repairs of the property is contributing 46.9 so what it means is that if you regress this one one by one one by one this is their contribution each contribution to the monthly renter. But if you know all these things are in the reality, they are happening at the same time. You can make your service good and at the same time make your state of repairs to be fine. And at the same time, the size is there and accessibility can change. So, all those, the question is. When the four factors are acting simultaneously on the monthly renter, and that is what the model summary gave us, that, oh, when they are acting simultaneously, all of them are contributing R square, which is 78 point something percent, and the contribution is a significant one. Does it make clearer? Yes, Dr. Um, doctor, in the model summary, we need yeah. to refer to the adjusted R square or the R, R square. R square. How about uh, does it uh will it be more accurate if we re uh, refer to the adjusted one? If you request to adjusted one, you adjust one. John is just giving us the point that if error has been taken care of, it could be seventy-eight or less, a bit less than. R square, but R square is what gives us the point that is normally most of the time the first point of call when you are interpreting regression. So we just ignore the adjusted one. Huh? Yes, you can anyone you you report to any examiner, the table will be looked into. But what the R square does is what you need to know. It gives the effect size of simultaneous event of all these factors. It become adjusted when error has been taken care of. Okay. Yeah. So are we okay with this interpretation? Because the ability to interpret is important. Yeah. This one. Um, 
And uh, I want to show the correlation too. Uh -huh. So interpreting the correlation too, we look at uh, what the relationship between two, two, this is income and life status. I think this is income and life status. We look at the two. For example, we have a negative. The, in fact, this is the reason why I, I want to point this one because this is a negative one. We have seen all positive relationship and significance level there. Here is a negative. What does it mean when it is negative? It means when one is going up, the other one is coming down, inverse relationship. And what here, we are looking at the life. Okay, life satisfaction and rank of income. Okay. So here, what we are saying is, does, if the income increases, does satisfaction with life increases? So that is what this analysis is talking about. L monthly income and life satisfaction with life. If you have more money, it's expected that you have more satisfaction. However, this data that was collected and analyzed shows that when life monthly when monthly income increase satisfaction with life decreases so one one increase one decrease but it's possible the statement of hypothesis will have stated that life satisfaction increases with monthly income showing that if you have income, if your income increase, you are more satisfied with life. Unfortunately, this correlation shows that the more money you have, the less satisfied with life you are. That is the implication. And that is what we want to be interpreted here. That, oh, this is a negative one, meaning that when one is increasing, the other is going down. That's an inverse relationship. One. Two, what is the size? 0. 0.658 is considered strong because it's getting more than the middle. So it can, it's considered strong. That's a strong relationship, though negative, no significant. Negative relationship showing that when one is increasing, the other one is decreasing. Of, uh, of strong effect, about 65.8% and significant. So these are the things we look into. Because if you just want to interpret and you forgot that this is a negative and you just reported 65 point something that is strong and significant, we really want to know the direction, positive or negative. So that's why I just want to point into this one because it's a negative one so that we don't forget that the sign is equally important too when we are interpreting correlations or coefficient of regression as well. Is that okay? Uh, doctor, for correlation, uh, what is the maximum and the minimum number? The value of the value is one, the minimum is zero. Zero means there's no correlation. Will it be negative? Negative one? It, no, yes. Ranging from, I mean, zero to one, negative or positive. It can be negative, it can be positive. Okay, that's negative one to positive one. So when it is one, it is perfectly, we call it perfect correlation. When it is zero, we call it no correlation. So if it is within the between one and 
between 0 and point, point, 0 and point 0.3, we call it weak. I think between 4 to 6, moderate, above 6 to 1, strong. That's, I know how there was a slide I give the categorization. Then it can be negative when the relationship is inverse. It can be positive when the relationship is direct. There are situations when one factor increase, another one increase. There are situations where one factor will increase, another factor decreases. That is why we can have either negative or positive. Is that okay? Um, okay, doctor. So for test, uh, the doctor like provide the table something like this, then we need to discuss. Yeah, it depends on how it comes. If you understood uh, this now, a table like this can be provided and you are to interpret. I'm not saying that is your test. I'm just telling you the ways, things we expect you to know how to do. Is that okay? Because as I'm here, no question yet. I don't know the direction of the question yet. Any other question? Yeah. The, the person is for parametric. And the, the spammer is for non-parametric. Yeah, person is for parametric. A spammer row is non-parametric. That's why I do the two. You say this one is for sync correlation for parametric, and this one is for non-parametric. So uh, before we, we do, we, we we need we need to determine for which one we want to use. So. Uh, how should we determine that the, the data is parametric or non-parametric? We need to draw the graph. Yes, one, one way of determining it is the kind of data you have collected. If the data is in an interval data or continuous data, what well, may be from 0, 1, 2, 3, millions, millions, million, you know, that's, that's a, a, a continuous data or scale, interval or scale data you use parametric test. When the data is categorical, one of the data is categorical, we go on to non-parametric. And let me show you here, if you look at the satisfaction with life here, satisfaction cannot be, mine, cannot be measured on a continuous scale. I, do you agree with me? Because when you want to measure satisfaction, you are likely to say highly satisfied, moderately satisfied, no satisfaction. And you know, you have to rank the, the level of satisfaction. And when you rank the level of satisfaction, it is not an interval data. It is a rank data, we call it categorical. But monthly income, look at the monthly income. You can, you can measure monthly income from one to million. So that's a continue, that's an interval data. But because one of them is not an interval data, the best correlation to do or the best test to do should be non-parametric. That's why I put it I put the two side by side. So here is just to demonstrate that even if you use parametric, there could be the results might be same, but when it's getting to certain level, there will be little, little, little differences. But statistically, once one of the data you are correlating is not an interval or scale data, is a non-parametric analysis. These are just statistical assumptions, rules. 
ok? Does it make it clear? Yes, doctor. Thank you. Okay, let's me exit my slideshow now. And I'm back in the house. So I stop sharing now. Because I've tried to, I, I decided to show you all those outputs and how to interpret the outputs, which is much more important to me than going through the stress of calculating correlation or regression and you don't know the meaning. Some people would can do all this, but when you tell them what does R square means, they don't understand. And these are the things that we are reporting, especially when you have conducted the research. All these elements of your analysis has to be reported so that people will know whether you have done it right or whether you have on, you know, understood the interpretation of your output. Okay, back in class. So any further question? We still have some minutes. Please mark your attendance in Spectrum. I think we still have some few minutes to do that. Mark your attendance in Spectrum, please. 